discipleship. I pastor, my name is Pastor Glendale Winston in Conway, 310 Conway, Arkansas. We welcome you in this morning's service. The day topic that we're going to be coming out of 23rd Psalm. And we have three things you need to know in this season that God have for you. So we want to get ready to get into the Word of God. We thank everybody for tuning in. I know you've been missing us. We've been off the air for a while. Took a break doing some things. But hey, look, we're back. We're ready for the Word of God. I hope you're still hanging on and still trusting in the name of the Lord. We, we're going to come out of 23rd Psalm today for our topic today that uh, God has for us. And it's in 23rd Psalm, it's the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not walk. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restore my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, I walk through the valley of shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Thou prepare a table before me, be, before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's bow here and let us pray. Father God, we just thank you. We praise you for the word today. We thank you. For our uh, man to come unto people to still minister to your word, do your job, and begin to teach your people to feed them. You said, man can't live by bread alone, but every word will see out of the mouth of God. God is going to anoint your word today and let it, let it, uh, the destiny, when you go and penetrate people hard, let them move them and encourage them into the next level that you have for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, hey, look. We're excited today. You have a word today. I have a word for you. Won't waste no time. We're going to get right into it. We're going to give you what God got for you so you can enjoy the word of God and hear what God has. Today we're going to be coming, talking about three things you need to know. Number one here, we see that we have to say when David was saying, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. And one thing I found out, if God is your shepherd, God is with you, who can be against you? And here in the, in the, in the book, of the songwriter, we see that he begins to say, The Lord is his shepherd, and he makes him lie down in green pastures, and say, Lead him by still waters. It goes on through the valley, shout of death, lead him to different levels of things good things, bad things, and then in the presence of his enemy, then says, to Dwell in the house of the Lord. So, we already know number one what we need. We need God. You need God right now more than anything ever in your life. To the academic going on, everything going on in the world today is something like unbelievable. But it's on every corner. And that's God that helps shield you or protect you to this far. And whatever you went through, you're still able to go through and handle what God is doing because God is your shepherd. He's with you. He got you. He protects you. He watches over you. He leads you through dangerous places and brings you out. He, like when he did with Daniel, he washed over them. They was sold out for God, and that no weapon would form against them couldn't even prosper because God had them. He was their God, and they were able to survive. They were able to make it in captivity. So we got to understand it's very important that God has to be our shepherd. God has to be number one. You have to keep God number one in your life in this season for everything else to work because we have no time for religion. Religion is out the door. I'm thinking the day I was coming, it was raining. Used to be somebody waiting at me with an umbrella to cover me. I never needed nobody to cover me with an umbrella. I never needed nobody to do it with me. I'm man enough to walk through that door. I'm man enough to get out of my car in the rain without an umbrella or with one. I'm able to do it. Religion is out the door. It is time that the Lord is our shepherd. Because when you're in battle time, when you're in war time, you are made to do the things that you normally wouldn't do. You're made to be tough. You're not made to be fragile. You're made to be strong. You're not made to be weak. You're not made to be dumb. You're made to be wise. To counteract your enemy. So we're in a season that we need the Lord as our shepherd. And so we got to understand what we're getting to think about this right here. Everybody is, you know, think, no, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I am one person I believe in. You'll see me have gloves on at the gas station. You'll see me have gloves on at the grocery store, you see me have gloves on all the time. And I go through a bunch of them, throw them away, throw them away, go through a bunch of them. Because I realize, understand, if you get on your hand, you put it in your mouth, you can get affected. So I just wear gloves to, to protect myself. 
So mask, wear my mask, I wear my mask when I'm in public and around different places. I'm gonna wear my mask. I'm gonna protect myself. I just didn't start trying to 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 be clean. I had a grandmother way many years. She would even when we would get one liter pop from the store, just way back when I was a kid, she would make you wash that pop down. And I thought, why is this woman doing this? But now understand, this woman trained us to be to be clean, wash your hands, do this right here, be protected. I did my girls the same way. So they've been trained for this for a long time to be natural, to be protected. But right now we need that. So what, what I'm getting to is this right here. If Sam or somebody put out a spray, we all gonna go and get it. Everybody got it over there, we're gonna get it, you know. We're gonna get that. If you put tissue paper, we're gonna go and get it. But this one thing that God began to tell me, he said the funniest thing what people are doing, they are excited about getting things, but if they excited to have me. Because in the day, if it don't work and you die, or you prepare to meet the Lord, the Lord got to be your shepherd. You have to get him. We are more getting products trying to protect ourselves instead of getting the one regardless that he know our date and time. And, and, and see, the reason I say this here, I'm going to put a pin in this real quickly, because usually we can always tell by November, we would always see God take his toll. We, he, he, people just start just supernatural, just dying and just, oh, you hear so and so die. And then sometimes it go past the first of the year. And we just, we know the season that God, some people are going to see 2021, or they might see it for a week or two. But we already know that God was going to take his toll and we would see it because we pay attention to it, to the atmosphere. And I brought attention to a lot of people in the ministry. Say, God will take his toll. And we begin to see that. But listen, God been taking his toll all year. He's been taking groves of peoples. And so, we have not been preparing ourselves. We don't know if our name number is in that. So, we will go to the store and we get all these cleaning products and we get all these masks and we get all these gloves. And I do it. But we have, do we have the Lord our shepherd? Are we prepared to be our maker? It is a 50-50 chance that in this season, unknowing how you can catch this stuff, this stuff do different things to different peoples. Are you prepared as the Lord your shepherd? Do you have him as your shepherd? Are you prepared to, to leave this earth? Or are you focusing on other things that you should not be focusing on? That's one thing I want to share with you. That's why I say the Lord is my shepherd. David said he was his shepherd. So we got to understand, if we don't make it through this season, it still be okay if you got the Lord as your shepherd. And God began to tell me, more people are running when they hear about a product and get it to protect them instead of running to hear to get a word of God into themselves. Now, some churches are cold. My, our church is cold. It's the wisest thing. It's the wisest thing this season to be cold and get the word of God. But let me tell you why God got these churches cold. How many times people talk about churches, talk about buildings, talk about buildings, and talk about the people in the building. But the, who knows the Bible says you don't need no master to teach you. When in that day, the Holy Spirit will come. You are the church. So how is your church doing today? Do you got God? Do you have him? Is he your shepherd? See, you can't point fingers at somebody else now. See, now the building is being emptied out and realize it wasn't the building God was coming back for. He's coming back for your church. He's coming back for your building. He's coming back for you. And so what we have to do, we have to make make sure that he's my shepherd. You got to make sure, study right now, get product. That's good. Get it. But you make sure. Now you can't point the fingers at nobody else. You can't talk about nobody else. You got to make sure you got Christ yourself because you is the body of Christ. Each and every one, we are the body of Christ. He said, in them days, no one need to teach you. You don't need no schoolmaster because they, when the Holy Ghost comes, it will teach you itself. And so that's the thing that God's coming back for. He's coming back for his spirit. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. That's our number one. Let's go to our number two. And number two, we're going to go to Matthew 25. We're going to begin to talk about the ten virgins. Five was wise and five was foolish. It says in Matthew 25, verse 1, he says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven should be likened unto ten, ten virgins, which took their laps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them was wise and five was foolish. That they was foolish took took their laps 
and took no oil with them. But the wives took oil with their vessels and with their lamps. He said, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Now he said, now watch what he says. He said, not only wives, they took their vessels with oil in and a lamp. So if the oil rod and lamp, they had some more they could put back in. They had an extra supply. They could just put oil in a lamp. But you watch the foolish, they just took their lamps. And the, the, uh, the wives took a vessel, had vessel with oil in it, and then had the lamps where they could pour in. If it went out, they can put some more in. In other words, they were more prepared. They had made the Lord their shepherd. They had his Holy Spirit. They had his word. They were not allowing nothing else come in their life to get out while God was there. They were doing whatever, forgetting him. They were prepared for him. They loved him. They wanted him. He was their shepherd. See, regardless of what they was going through, they always was prepared. And the Bible says while they slept and slumbered, he called them and they came out. See, even when a time that you're thinking that of not about God present, or you ain't thinking about God coming, he shows up. And so, in other words, we got to be ready in season, out of season. We got to be ready at all times for God. There ain't no time that he cannot be our shepherd. He got to be our shepherd at all times. You got to love him. Whatever you go to, you got to love him. Do the bad, the good, the ugly. That's why he said, when I carry you to the to the valley of shadow of death, that was mountain where the sun didn't shine. Nothing could live there. He take you to a place where nothing can live, and he will lead you and bring you out. So in other words, he'll take you to a place where everything hits you, every way that it can hit you, he still will bring you out. See, I ain't get no amens right there. See, because see, that's what a shepherd does. You're not a you're not a perfect person. You are a human being. And he knows that you're gonna have mistakes. He knows that you're gonna do what you're gonna do. But you know what? His anointing is vicious enough to bring you to, to take you to, to get you there. Now we're gonna talk about that in the last thing. But this is the second. We gotta understand demon virgins. And one song just had the lamp saying, Okay, yeah, 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 we know God. Yeah, we got him, yeah, yeah, you know. But then take nothing with him. Didn't have no will with him. Didn't have no way with him. Didn't have the ups and downs. And God, I still love you. Maybe you didn't answer me right there. Maybe that was your will. I didn't like it, but I still love you. Maybe, maybe things are going my way the way it should do, but I still love you. Yeah, I'm a human being. I made a mistake, but yeah, I still love you. I still got my oil. I still got my vessel. I still believe in you. I still ain't trusting you. I don't care what they're doing over there. Just because you ain't here, I'm not going to do what they're doing. I still love you. You know where I'm at. You know who I am. I still love you. I still have my oil. And I'm not only my, my lamp, I have a vessel. If I run out, I got some extra. You know you got some extra toilet paper. You know you got some extra all that. But do you got some extra oil in you when the storm hits you that you won't run out? Do you still got it right that you still can say, you know what? I will get you, but I still love the Lord. I, I messed up, but I still love the Lord. Things didn't go my way, but I still love the Lord. My child died, but I still love the Lord. Oh, you got enough oil to carry you to, to God call on your name. That's the question about the foolish and the wise. The wise said, whatever I go through, I still love you. You can't shake me because you're my shepherd. You can't break me because you're my Lord. I'll always have praise continues be in my mouth. And so we have to know that we have to we have to have to have enough. Oh, you have a conversation with somebody, you get mad, you just all messed up. And you just all just ugly. You just can't. No, you ain't got enough oil in your lamp. You didn't got nothing in your vessel to pour in and to make it shine. Something to still go words. You, you still don't have it. See, that's what you don't do. You don't let it get knocked out. You may get knocked down. The Bible says just may fall it seven times. But he get back up again. Say the wicked don't get back up. They just continue in their stuff. But a just man will get knocked down. He fumbles. He falls. Nobody's perfect. But he get back up. See, we can't point at a building now. You are the church. You are the ministry. You are who you are. And, and you'll be judged at who you are. And you'll be judged at who you love. So you are the building. And I thank God for it. He took the pressure off of churches and off of ministries and off of ministries because you know why? It's individual. I told somebody the other day, if you passed the test and you made straight A's, you wouldn't be getting mad over there because somebody making F's. You should thank God because you got good credit. You wouldn't get mad over there because somebody ain't got no bad, got bad credit. You should thank God you got credit. But how can we point people and other people in churches? You need to worry about that you good with God. Don't get mad at them. Just thank God that if, if your credit was good, you'd be like, 
that's them. If you make the straight A's, that's them. But why do we put fingers on somebody else when we messed up? See, when you got it going on, you don't worry about nobody else. Only people worry about something like that's when you got bad credit, when you got good credit, they could have managed you. Only when somebody making A's get got else mad at somebody making A's. So if you got A's and good credit, why you mad at somebody else? So see, that's the way it is now. If you got God and you don't get, you won't get mad at nobody else. So I think God is a personal thing. That today we are the church. We are the building. So that's the second thing. The first thing you need the Lord to be your shepherd. Second thing, you need to have a, have the full pledge of him in this season. So whatever come at you in this season, it won't knock it out of you. You got enough to pull in and keep your light burning. And when it burn out, well, I ain't got no more. I'm done. I ain't got no more. I didn't bring no more. I didn't want to try no more. I ain't, don't even ask me no more. Don't even talk to me no more. I'm done with it. I'm done with church. No oil. I know I can't tell me what to do. I want to do. Renegades. Running to and fro. Itching ears. Jumping from here to here. Getting out from under covenant. Getting them out of things that God have God have already blessed you, told you, warned you. Get you some more. Because in this season, you may not get what you get last season. Last year you made it know five years out what was going to happen. This even got one me. Why should I tell, tell people something that won't do nothing with it? So this season you may be proper lying. Because you may not have what you got last season. You remember Saul and Samuel. When Samuel, Saul was disobedient. And Samuel said, you know what? God wanted to find somebody else at the very own heart. And left Saul as a king. But without a word from God, the evil spirit come upon him. He still going crazy. He realized he didn't have it no more. It wasn't there for him no more. Because of disobedience. See, we got to understand that this season, we have to be prepped and make sure our oil is right. It ain't time to go playing and go and play in church. It's time. You better know. You better have a relationship. This thing is real out here. This thing is real all day long. It's real. We have to be ready. I'm get you the third, third thing that I'm going home. Glory be to God. I come to feed you today. We have to have the word of God. Okay, we're going to go to Psalm, the, 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 Psalm the 25th verse. He said, oh Lord, I do lift up my soul. Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let not, let not me, let me not be shamed, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be shamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Show me thy ways, O Lord, and teach me thy path. Lead me in thy truth. Teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Now see the one was wise. They had oil and wait on the Lord. He said, remember, O Lord, thou tender mercy and thou loving kindness, for they have been even of old. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgression recording to thy mercy, and remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is, is the Lord. Therefore I will teach sinners in the way. The meekness will he guide and judge, and meekness he will he he will teach his ways. And all is past. That the Lord are the mercy, mercy and truth, who such as keepeth his covenant and his testimony. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquities, for it is great. What is a man that he fears the Lord? He shall teach in the way that shall be done. 
his soul shall dwell in ease. His seed shall inherit the earth. The secrets of the Lord is, is with them that fears him. And he will show them his covenant. My eyes is forever towards the Lord. For he shall pluck my feet out of the net. He turned thee unto me and have mercy upon me. For I am desolate and afflicted. The trouble of my heart and Lord, O bring me out of my distress. Look upon my affliction, my past, and forgive all my sins. Consider my enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with a a hatred. So, O keep my soul, dwell with me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Let the integrity and the upright preserve me, for I wait on thee. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. It's the third thing you need to know. Things may not go your way. Her David said, you know, but hey, forgive me of my sin, my transgression. It may be things, Jacob, may not go your way. But it's a purpose that God got away for you to go that may not look right. Jacob had to go away what was already was his, his but it's a way that he had to break the system. Because I didn't know the old one, which would be Esau, would be next one in line to get it. But God had already told, Re told, told Rebecca, no, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be Jacob. He's going to be the one going to be, going to have the kingdom. He's the one going to have it. But by the law, the first one born is supposed to one pass the blessing on to. And there had to be some things go down to break the law of man. Because God had a new plan going. And sometimes it have to break things and don't seem right to us what we normally see. And a lot of times people will count you out when God got something on you. It may not go the way it should go. You may look crooked. You may not look right. But God is shifting you into your right place where you got to go. See, because Jacob had to run to his uncle Laban house so he can get Rachel. He can get Leo. So he can get... Israel, so he can have these children to begin to go. But when he was going, the blessing was upon him when he was running from his brother Esau. But at the same time, his uncle was getting blessed because he was saying the anointing was upon Jacob. It wasn't deniable that the anointing was on him. It was on him, but then he was looking like he wasn't right. So see, in a season, you will not look like you are not right, but you is right because God is breaking what man say it should be but it's still good in God because you is what God said you would be. And it's the same way he done with David. It's the same way he done with Joseph. That's the, oh, y'all not talking. Same way he done with, with, with uh, Jeremiah. It, it is the way God do it. It's a system I'm telling you in this season. An enemy may attack you and may look like you and may make the world talk about you and may look like you are nothing but God have a purpose still down inside of you. So in this season, three things you need to know. The Lord is my shepherd. And another thing you need to know, I need to have enough anointing and enough of relationship in me to know the purpose that God got for me until he called me home. And the third you got to know that if God with you, who can be against you? You may not look the way man wants you to look. Things may not be going the way man wanted to go and say something wrong with you, but you got to know there's something down inside of you that God didn't put in you that man can't do nothing with, that God's going to work everything out because God have a purpose to get you to where you need to go. David ran for 20 years in caves, anointed on his life. Kid Moriah, anointed on his life. David says it all the time. Block out my transgression. People didn't like David. David was a warrior. He was bloody. He couldn't build a temple. But God says, your, 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 your throne will last forever. See, we forget that. We forget all about that. There's a lot of people that some things are going on in your life may not be the way you want it to go. But guess what? You're still anointed from God. And that's the main thing. Oh, that God got you. I'm going to tell you this and I got to get out of here. If God is for you, who can be against you? So David began to say, Lord, I lift you up. I begin to let you know who you are. Because you know why? Because the Lord was his shepherd. And guess what he had? He had a lot of word, a lot of anointing. And God had him. Joseph know that God had him. Daniel know that God had him. Jeremiah know that God had him. You got to understand, Jacob knew that God had him. Jacob 
left coming back and he had no he had prospered all he could there and God told him he had to go back and as he began to go back he had to wrestle with the angel he said I'm not letting you go till you bless me God put some in him have hungry in him to want what God had he had enough audacity in him enough fight in him that you couldn't shame him he'll get up I'm getting what God got for me even though I'm going to meet my brother Esau, he want to kill me. But God, I know if you put something in me on this next level that I'm going to be all right. And God began to that night ask him, ask him, so what you want me to do? He said, daylight, I got to let you go. He said, I want you to bless me before you go. Because he understood if God didn't bless him, he wouldn't be blessed. And you know, when he, and the angel pushed his thigh, he leveled up. Let me say, now your name is Israel. He took it from just being anointed to a king now of a nation. See, that's what God wants to do. Don't allow the enemy to talk crazy you tell you he gonna get you you done done him wrong he gonna stop you but if God got a calling on your life or God got a purpose in your life the enemy can't do nothing with you it may not look good right now it may not feel good right now but that's a purpose down inside of you that God got in you and that when David began to call on this God he said let my enemies be ashamed oh you're not talking to me right now so it's a season now you got to know who you are you got to know your purpose you got to know your destiny. It don't matter how it look. It don't matter how it feel. Don't ever give up on God. When God has pinpointed you. And God has penciled you in. God has summoned you. God has anointed you. For a season. See, it don't matter. See, been many. You know. Sarah. Sarah. She began to tell, well, I heard what God said, I'm having a baby, but go into my, go into my hand, mate. go into Hagar, go on, let's make an Ishmael here. Mm -mm. See, there's been many things to try to get you off your destiny, but when God with you, God would take your mess up and turn around and still get you in your destiny. You got to understand this. See, there's been many things to try to get you off your destiny and say, mm, I think you, just go this way. See, God still have it. And David understood it. He began to lift up to him and say, I will trust in you. Teach me your ways. I know your ways. Because men say, oh, this ain't going to happen. That's going to happen. First thing that you know what? All this so-called anointing didn't know this was going to happen. All the big relationships they can tell you about God back and forth. Scholars could not tell you this was going to happen. They were saying that who supposed to be chosen in politics was the wrong person. No, it's supposed to be in there to beat on people hard that they need revival. They need revival. They need revival. It's almost like a Mount Carmel time when Elijah said, Call on your God, let me call him by. And they see them with false prophets and begin to be killed because they said, I'm not watching that person no more because what that person was saying was wrong in this season. Just because people are blessed and got money don't mean nothing because I noticed everybody who didn't have it. John the Baptist said, why you come out here? Who told your wife to come to me? He was in the wilderness. Elijah, it was, it was the rain of rain and food. And he said, let's have a Mount Carmel. Go while we bless prophets. Big things. See, people look for people like that, but it's not in that. I noticed it was a nobodies that God had his word in. So if you're going to do something in this season, you remember this. This, this is it. You don't let go. He said, even my shame. He asked, he had David deal with that. He said, even my enemies, let them look shame. But you have to have enough to know that it's not about you. It's about God. You got to have enough oil to go with you when that burn out. You better pull you some more. Because God ain't too. And the very number one thing, he got to be your shepherd. He'll lead you through everything I just talked about. That God was leading them through, led them through everything. But he have to be the shepherd. He have to be number one. And then you got your part to play. You have to trust you. Them the three things that you need to know in this season that you have to have. These are things you've got to put down inside of you. You've got to know who you are. 
Because only God knows what he put in you. Nobody else can tell you. You have to know yourself. I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you today. Them three things. You got to put them in your heart. You got to make them your shepherd. You got to keep the word in you. And you trust him. And you got to keep it in you till he come back for you. And the third thing. You may look like you done went down the wrong road. You may look like everything messed up. But if the Lord is your shepherd, I shall not want. If God your shepherd, many people was his shepherd. Many people know his ways. And he, he always told Israel what was going on. And he still went the opposite way. Because they seemed to show up. If the Lord is your shepherd, you're going to be okay. But the problem with it is, don't get messed up in your going through. Trust him. Be determined. Be determined. David was talking about so bad. Be determined when his son didn't, didn't you not have a business right, man. You, you didn't kill you didn't kill my half brother that raped my sister. Why you let him get away? And he 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 he, he had mind made up to take the throne from David. David left. David left left the covenant art there. David left with shame. They talked about David. See there? That's what you get. That's what you get. But God was with David. And David had enough in him to go through every shame that it was. But only God had, had chosen him to love him through everything he ever went through. He said, your mercy. Don't forget your kindness or your mercy in your grace. God bless you. I want you to remember this. Keep it. Study it. Think about it. This is what you need. You need to eat this word. You need it in the season. You need to be strong. A strong tower for the Lord. I say God bless you. Oh God continue his grace to be shining upon you. And I, I tell you that you're hungry. You hungry, you want God. I don't got time for nobody in my circle that is not going the way I'm going. Or can I add to my team to help me go forward? Any other foolishness to flatten my tires. To hold me back don't mean me no good. I ain't got time for none of that because I can't go forward playing with foolishness. I'm determined this season to be what God said and to do what God said. I'm human. I'm not perfect, but my Lord is. And he has a purpose. And I'm determined for God's purpose to rain and shine and do what he had promised he's going to do. See, God bless you. Look. I'll never end without saying this here. Romans 10, 9 says, If you confess with your mouth and believe that Jesus Christ, Son of God, that he raised from the dead, you believe in your heart, say you're saved. I don't say anybody out there don't know Jesus Christ. Hey, I'm going to say, will you come? Will you come and give your life over? Will you come? Will you come? Will you confess it? That's it right there where you're at. Believe and receive him. Because we are in a time, it is a 50-50 chance we don't know. So the Lord got to have shepherd. You got to have oil. You got to be ready to meet him. I know everybody's stocking up, but are you stocking up today? Say, God, come in my life. I receive you right now. We should be telling all our loved ones there tonight because it's that dangerous. Right now, instead of calling on God and religion like he don't hear us, it's a relationship. It is an everyday thing. It is an everyday thing. David said, Teach me, show me your way. Why? Because a relationship. He had a relationship with God. When the religion, faith, praying, and throwing out these fancy words, and see, all that stuff is done away with now. It is a personal realness relationship with God. It's a Mount Carmel time. You call your God to call mine. It's a Mount Carmel time. You got to keep the oil, you got to have it. You must receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. This is the most wisest thing you ever do. Because that stuff can't save you. People's had it and they still caught it. And dead and gone. And left this stuff still in their closet. But one person you cannot. You cannot forget your Lord and Savior. You need to receive him today. 
And I'm going to say to everyone out here, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to bow heads. We're going to pray. I'm, I'm, I'm in a season of no nonsense. I ain't got time for no nonsense. Because you know what? When you're in war, you don't have time for nonsense. It's a war out here. Everybody carrying guns. Everybody is, uh, don't really know what's going on. Just, just going on trying to make it. I'm tense. It's everywhere. It is atmosphere. It is like a time bomb. So I don't have time to play with no one. I am have no time to play church. I have not time for no foolishness. It's the Bible mode. It's time to be no God or you don't know him. It's time not to play. It's time to receive it. One thing I see, I see who got the church back. And I appreciate every one of you that have the church back. That you've been paying your tithe. It's on but hand for you. But I thank God for you. I know when we start back up, you will walk close with me. Because I trust you because you have been faithful. Not just because you, you don't have to do that. That show your faithfulness. That show that regardless, you are like the virgin. Regardless if we don't have church. But regardless, still, you still got your oil. You still got your word. You still got your faithfulness. And God honored that. And I thank God for you. And I'm going to tell you that. Just pat yourself on the back. Stay strong. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you for your word today. We thank you. We trust you in your word, God. We thank you. The three things we need to know. We need to make you our Lord. We need to keep the oil. Be prepared like you are there at all times. Not be calm, God. We need to know, God, that whatever we go through, that your mercy and grace is good enough for us. That, God, whatever we go through, your purpose is still good. When it look, don't look good, it's still good. God, I thank you today for all the listeners. I thank you today for your word. I thank you today for your anointing. I thank you, Jesus, for getting on that cross, for dying and bleeding and paying the ultimate price for us. And you put death on your feet, but the grave did not hold you. And hell could not keep you. But you sit at the right hand of the Father. And we thank you today because of that. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone say amen. Well, God bless you. My name is Pastor Glendale Winston at Salem 310 Conway, Arkansas. Look here. No nonsense. At time to play no games. It's what the word of God is. It's what we need. We got to walk in it. Because you know what? You are the body of Christ. Until we meet again, God bless you. Remember the three things you need to know. Keep them. Be strong with them. Be a soldier in the army of the Lord. God bless you.